Hello everyone. This is Pratima and welcome back to Planet Physiology. In part 1 of hemocytometry, we have studied about the construction principle of Neuber's chamber and today we shall delve into the diluting pipettes. We have seen that hemocytometer contains two specialized pipettes, the WBC pipette and the RBC pipette along with the Neuber's chamber. Let's start with the purpose of the pipettes in hemocytometry. In a typical blood sample, there are approximately 4.5 to 6 million RBCs and about 4000 to 11000 WBCs per cubic millimeter. These high cell counts make it challenging to observe and count them directly under the microscope. Also, the RBCs in whole blood stack on each other to form rouleau. This further makes the cell counting difficult. To address these issues, we dilute the blood sample to the known volume, which reduces the concentration of the cells and simplifies counting. Pipettes are essential in this process as they allow us to accurately dilute the blood sample to the specific volume. This ensures reliable and manageable cell counts. Okay, at this moment, take a pause. and observe both these pipettes do you find any similarities and differences among them note your finding and then resume okay you must have noted that both the pipettes look similar but one has a bigger dilatation it's called bulb few of you might have noted there is a small bead within the bulb which differs in color Some might have noted the differences in the numbers mentioned on the pipettes and another quick observation could be the color difference in the last part of the pipette If you have noted all these four points I can say that you are a keen observer Okay now let's go deeper into the parts of the pipette starting with the RBC pipette The initial long narrow part of the pipette is called as stem Though it might appear solid it actually has a narrow lumen or a bore blood sample and the diluting fluid are collected through the tip of the stem the volume of the entire stem is considered as one part and it is divided into 10 equal segments each point one segment is marked with a line these markings guide you in obtaining the precise amount of blood sample As you can observe the 5th and 10th mark are labeled as 0.5 and 1 respectively note that the 0.5 is written above the 5th line hence if you wish to collect blood sample up to 0.5 mark it should be till the mark below the number many a times novice students commit mistake by drawing blood up to the upper mark which is 0.6 part this alters the final dilution and gives you false higher values of cell count now let's take a closer look at the bulb the lumen of the stem expands to form the bulb it is thin walled and narrows down on the other end to form a thick and short part similar to the stem bulb is the place where blood sample is diluted in case of rbc pipette volume of the bulb is 100 times than that of the stem How do you know this? This is evident from the numbers mentioned on the pipette. The marking at the beginning of the bulb is 1 and at the end of the bulb is 101 indicating bulb holds 100 times the stem volume. As you have already noticed, bulb has a small red color bead within it. This bead serves three important purposes. First is identification of the pipette. RBC pipette always has red colored bead. Second, it acts as dryness indicator. As you can see, the bead moves freely within the bulb when I am tilting the pipette. This movement indicates that the pipette is dry, which is crucial before starting to collect the blood sample for any cell count. If the pipette is wet, bead will stick to the wall of the bulb and it will not move freely. The third function of the bead is to mix the contents that is mixing of the blood sample and the diluting fluid ensuring an even distribution of the cells for counting now let's look at the rubber tube attached behind the bulb the tube is inserted in the last segment of the pipette 
and does not obstruct the marking and the number mentioned after the bulb the other end of the tube is fitted with detachable mouthpiece which is red colored in case of rbc pipette this mouthpiece not only supports the color scheme of the pipette for easy identification but also enables you to obtain blood sample by applying a gentle suction okay this was about rbc pipette now let's take a closer look at wbc pipette its basic structure is similar to that of rbc pipettes so we shall focus on the key differences the stem of the wbc pipette also has markings at 0.5 and 1 just like that of rbc pipette but the lumen of the pipette is wider the bore is wider additionally the number after the bulb is 11 indicating that the bulb's capacity is 10 times than that of the stem which makes the bulb slightly smaller the bulb has white color bead and the mouthpiece attached to the rubber tube is also white in color both this make it easy for identification of the wbc pipette so white color helps in easy identification of the wbc pipette as i mentioned these pipettes are used to obtain desired level of dilution so let's see how do we know the dilution achieved it's very simple if you take the blood up to 1 mark and diluting fluid up to 11 mark dilution you get is 10 times now you may wonder how 10 times why not it's 11 times because marking after the bulb is 11 so just think always we obtain blood sample first and then the diluting fluid so in which part of the pipette dilution is happening yes it's the bulb and how much is the volume of the bulb if you are using wbc pipette so one part of the blood is getting diluted to 10 times there is a general formula also to calculate the dilution which is better known as dilution factor so it is calculated as final volume of the blood sample divided by the original volume of the blood sample say if you have taken blood up to 0.5 mark and diluted till 11 mark then the dilution factor becomes 10 divided by 0.5 which becomes 20 times it means that you have diluted 0.5 part of the blood to 20 times similarly if you take the blood up to 0.5 mark in rbc pipette and diluting fluid up to 101 mark dilution factor becomes 200 times hope this point is clear now let's study how to collect and dilute the blood sample by using this pipettes You can obtain capillary blood sample from the fingertip or you can use blood sample collected in the lab by venipuncture. I will be describing how to collect the sample from finger prick so capillary blood sample. So first before taking finger prick make sure that your pipette is clean and dry and it is patent. To check for its patency place the mouthpiece in the mouth and blow through it. Feel for the air current at the dorsum of your hand. If air current is felt, pipette is patent. Also, keep the appropriate diluting fluid ready near you. So, once your setup is ready, sterilize your fingertip and take the bold finger prick. Always wipe off the first drop, as it is contaminated with tissue fluid and hence alters the cell count. Allow the next drop to form on the fingertip. Once a good sized drop is formed, place the mouthpiece in the mouth. and touch the tip of the pipette to the blood drop and gently draw the blood as per your requirement usually we take up to 0.5 mark while drawing blood sample pipette should be held at an angle of 45 degrees to the blood drop with markings facing you this ensures that you can see the amount of blood you are drawing into the pipette also the suction force should be very slow and steady and for this you need good control over your breath while pipetting the tip of the pipette must be within the blood drop otherwise air will also enter the pipette another precaution to follow the tip of the pipette should not be pressed against the fingertip as it will block the opening and blood cannot enter the pipette so with all these precautions you can obtain the required quantity of the blood without any air bubbles once the required amount of the blood is drawn Wipe the outside of the pipette tip to remove the excess of blood. 
Now place the pipette into the diluting fluid and carefully draw it up until it reaches the mark above the bulb which may be 11 or 101 depending upon the pipette you are using. Take care that once the blood is taken into the pipette, immediately it should be diluted without wasting any time. This prevents clotting of the blood within the pipette and blocking it. After taking diluting fluid, mix the contents by holding the pipette horizontally in the palm and rotating it. This prepares your diluted blood sample ready for cell count. Ok, this was about how to use the pipette properly. Before winding up the session, let's go through the important points. Pipettes in hemocytometer are used to dilute blood samples to facilitate cell counting. RBC pipette has larger bulb and 101 marking above the bulb, while WBC pipette has smaller bulb and 11 marking above the bulb. RBC pipette has red bead whereas WBC pipette has white bead within the bulb. Mouthpiece of RBC pipette is red and that of WBC pipette is white. RBC pipette has narrow bore and WBC pipette has wider bore. RBC pipette is used for RBC count as well as for platelet count while WBC pipette is used for total WBC count and eosinophil count. So in general whenever cell count is higher you need higher dilution and therefore RBC pipette is used. For lesser cell count or lower cell count WBC pipette is used. Ok, now few questions for you as a homework. What are the other uses of RBC pipette? Can you use RBC pipette for WBC count? Or WBC pipette for RBC count? Justify your answers. Post your answers in the comment section below. And that's all about this session. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Are you new to my channel? Then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.